Today, we are presenting um, the new web application Fleetran that was released last week by our team. And just a little housekeeping before we get started. Um, if you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the question box in your Zoom control panel. We will have time for questions at the end of the webinar. Uh, so, in today's webinar, we will take a look at the um, functionality of the fleet run and we will get to know the fundamentals of this application. Uh, the fleet run is designed for managing vehicle maintenance, controlling the costs and obtaining analytical information on the closed services and costs. The application can be used by different participants of the maintenance process, like fleet managers, fleet maintenance supervisors, engineers, and some responsible people for the process of the maintenance. Mm. As you could have noticed, we use the term fleet when we are talking about fleet run. So let's assume that a fleet is a container for units, intervals, services, and line items. And the next question for us today is how do we activate a fleet and how to access the fleets and start working with them? So uh, let's go to the management panel. And uh, by default, the fleet run service is enabled for all the accounts in VLON of all levels. Uh, you can disable the service if you are not going to work with the application for some particular accounts. So we just find the, the service in the list. Here it is. Here we have fleet run. And if you don't need it for this particular account, you can just disable it. So by default, it is activated for all the accounts. Um, okay. So to access the, the app, we have a special page. Uh, the address of the page is fleetrun.vialon.com. So you can use this page for accessing the app, but we can add the app to the list of the valuable applications uh, on the management system and on the monitoring page. So to do this, uh, we just have to log into the management system as the top user of the account or the service. Uh, we should go to the app configurator and uh, if we don't see fleet run in the list of the installed apps, we have to add it from the library. So we go to the library, we find the fleet run application here, and we add it to the installed apps. So we just save it. And now if we go to the applications list, we can see the here it is, we see the fleet run application available from here. So just two ways to access the application interface. Okay, uh, so after all the preparations are done, we can go to the fleet run interface and activate the fleets. Uh, so the administrator interface is valuable for the service top user and for all the users from the accounts with dealer rights. Uh, please pay your attention that a fleet cannot be activated for the top account and only for the subordinated ones. So let's see. Mm, the user fleet, fleet run admin is uh, a user with, with dealer rights, and this user has some subordinated accounts. So uh, when this user logs into the fleet run interface, he can see a list of the subordinated accounts, and we can activate the fleets for the accounts we need. So it is done like this. Um, let's reload it, some long time waiting. So we can deactivate it, 
and we can activate it if we need a fleet to be uh, available for this account. Uh, so after the activation is done, we can administrate the, the fleet. Let's do it like, like here. Uh, so the first tab we see when we start administrating the fleet is um, uh, the user's access rights. We see the list of the users. We can provide access rights to the fleet. Uh, and we see that we have access rights towards the intervals and towards the services. So we can provide only view access right towards the intervals and services, and we can provide a user with modified access rights towards the intervals and the services. So um, please uh, pay your attention but that uh, by default, uh, only the creator of an account with a fleet activated uh, obtains the full access towards a fleet. Uh, meanwhile, the accesses for the rest of the users of the same account are supposed to be provided manually um, and these accesses are not given uh, by default. So if you need more users have access to, to a fleet, just provide the corresponding uh, access rights in this tab. Uh, the next tab um, gives us a possibility of including the units in this particular fleet. Uh, when we go to this tab, uh, by default, we see a list of the units uh, created in this particular account. We see this list um, in the right part of the, of the screen. Uh, as far as you see, there are no units created in this particular account. So in this case, we can uh, switch to another list for all valuable units to this user and in this case we will be able to choose among a list of the units uh, available to this user we are working with now. So we select the units we want to include into the fleet just like this and so we receive a list of the units that will be controlled for this particular fleet. Uh, so next one, uh, we go to the fleet settings. The fleet settings include the time zone, uh, if there is daylight saving time or no. Uh, we can add the unit measurement uh, system if it's uh, mileage in kilometers or miles. And we can add uh, the currency for this fleet to calculate the maintenance costs. And the final step, is the creation of the notification. Mm, this option may be useful for the fleets uh, that are, uh, do not only use fleet run application but also use their own uh, ERP systems and in case of the necessity to um, receive the information about these notifications on your own server you can enable these notifications. You can disable uh, or enable the already created notifications right here, or you can create a new notification. In this case, just um, put the notification name, uh, just uh, you know, put the server address, uh, select one of the methods uh, that will be used for uh, sending the request. By default, it is a post method and uh, select the notification type you would like to receive um, on your server. After that, you will be able to put uh, the notification text. It can be just a, a custom text, uh, any text you wish, or you can use the text that are provided here uh, and the information uh, for the notification will be um, configured according to the text you use for it. Uh, so, um, generally, that is all uh, about the fleet administration. Um, and uh, let's see what other option we have here to help you to switch from the maintenance module from via, in Vialon uh, to the fleet run module. So, let's see, we select a fleet. Let's select this one. We select a fleet 
Uh, and for this fleet, we have uh, a special button that is called uh, migrate da data from Vialon. And if we use this option, we will see a list of all the intervals uh, already created for the units in the fleet uh, in Vialon. And we will be able to um, migrate this data with fleet run. Um, we will have access to the intervals and services created uh, uh, since last three years. Uh, so we receive the list of all the services and we see the number of units that these intervals are created for. So we can select some, some interval we would like to move from Vialon to Fleetrun. So let it be the, this one. And we press the migrate button and let's wait a little bit. Uh, here we are. We receive a notice that tells us that we have run interval migrated from Vialon to Fleetrun. Uh, and even a service based on this interval has been created. And that's all with the migration. Uh, okay, so after all the preparations are done, we can go to the user interface and let's go to the user interface. It is the same page. Uh, it is also fleetrun.vialon.com, but uh, the interface is different because uh, the user that um, logs into the system uh, has access to a fleet. So he will see a user interface instead of the administration interface. Okay, mm, as you see that uh, after logging into the interface, you will be able to see the fleet dashboard. Uh, and the fleet dashboard contains the following information. It contains the information on the services. We have the number of services in, uh, due services, we see the number of overdue services, and we see a number of the services in progress right now. Uh, we see the number of units, we see the active units and the units in service, and we also see the total number of all the intervals created for this particular fleet. Um, as far as you see, all the three bars are clickable, so you can go to the services from the dashboard, you can go to the units from the dashboard, and you can go to the intervals from the dashboard. So in general, the navigation is quite consistent and some of the same actions like uh, registering um, um, the services, registering are available from different windows of the application. We will see how it works a little bit later. Uh, so, dashboard also provides the information regarding the costs of all services for the total mileage. Uh, so, uh, the system counts the total mileage uh, of the fleet uh, since the fleet creation in fleet run. And after that, the system counts the total cost of all the services since the fleet creation and um, after all the calculations are done we receive the information um, for the um, cost per one kilometer or per one mile. Uh, so and two graphs are also available uh, here on our dashboard. Um, we can see a graph of the total cost of all the performed services since the fleet activation. And we can see a graph of mileage or engine hours. We can switch to engine hours uh, again since the fleet activation. Uh, we can select the interval we would like to see. So, and we see the information on the graphs. Uh, so, as far as you see now, the information for the selected interval um, is uh, provided on the graphs, but we are planning to add the possibility for the monthly graphs comparison. So, you will be able to compare the costs 
uh, of the fleet maintenance and the mileages and engine hours for some particular selected months. So, um, but in order for the dashboard to be informative, uh, some preparational work is to be done. Let's see how this can be done in the, in the application. Mm, and let's start with the less obvious option. It is called uh, Line Items Library. It is um, located here in, when you press the username. So you select the Line Items Library. And uh, well, it is a register with the information about the costs of vehicle man maintenance. There are two types of costs. Uh, they are the cost for parts and for labor. Uh, you can later use these line items previously created uh, for the intervals creation and for the services creation. So let's see how a line item is created. You just add a new line item. Let's do it one more time. So you just use this button for adding a new line item. And after that, you just um, give it a name. So let it be line item one. Uh, you select if it is uh, a part or if it is a labor. So let it be a part and you put it, uh, you put some cost for this line item. And to save it. So you can do the same with the labor. So you just add an, a line item and you select uh, labor here and you put, put some name to this item. And you put the cost for this item. Okay, and you save it. So generally it is just a list uh, that uh, can be used in the future when you will be creating intervals and services. Uh, so um, let's go to the intervals. Uh, an interval is the type of the vehicle maintenance work as well as the frequency of this maintenance. Uh, in other words, um, an interval sets a condition for a service creation. Here you can create and edit uh, the services intervals as well as assign units to them. Uh, so if a unit is assigned to an interval, uh, uh, the services based on this interval will be created automatically. So let's see how an interval can be created in the system. We use this button, create an interval, we go to the general tab, we give it a name. Uh, we can add some additional description if needed. And after that, we have to choose uh, what kind of uh, interval type will be used for the for this interval? Uh, it can be done by mileage. Uh, you just uh, put the frequency of uh, a service uh, necessary to be performed according to this interval. And after that, you put uh, the advanced uh, mileage uh, for creating a service automatically based on this interval for this unit. So if we put, for, for example, 100 here, a service will be automatically created when the mileage will be 900. Uh, so you can add uh, an interval by engine hours, uh, 
so the same, you put uh, the number of engine hours that have to be reached for the service um, performance, and you add uh, the number of advanced engine hours for creating um, for creating a service automatically. So if we put uh, 200 here, a uh, service will be created when the engine hours reach 800. And you can put um, the type by type. In this, in, the, in this case, you just indicate the frequency of this interval uh, in days or in weeks or even in months or years. So let's put... Um, Okay, let it be 30 days and we put that a service needs to be created some seven days before. That means that the service will be created in 23 days. Uh, well, you can use one, one of these options for creating an interval or you can use two or even three of them. In this case, a service will be created when the, the first condition is met. Uh, okay, mm, after that we go to the line items mm, part and we see that we can add the total cost for the interval. In this case we just add the total cost with, without, special, mm, without indicating if it is a labor or if it is a part. So we just put the total cost. Um, another option is adding some line items from the library that we have just created for our fleet. So we just uh, use the add button and we select if it is a part or a labor. So if it is a part, we select the parts we already have. So let it be like this. And the cost automatically is received from the line items library, but you can modify it manually if you need. Uh, and we can add um, um, some labor from the library as well. Let it be, okay, or oil change. So the cost is also automatically taken from the library, but the same, you can uh, modify it manually if you need and you create an interval. But before creating an interval, you can assign some units from your fleet to this interval. Uh, so let's select, for example, these units, or you can select uh, all of them, or you can select some particular ones. So let's select all of them, and we add them to this interval. And um, doing this, uh, the service will be automatically created for these units when uh, the condition we put in the general tab is met. So when the mileage is 800 or no, 900, when the engine hours reach 800, or when there are 23 days left. Okay, uh, by the way, uh, the time of the last service may be um, performed according to this interval is also um, put here um, in the list of the units. Uh, so uh, by default, uh, the current units mileage and the current unit units engine hours are put here. And also the today's uh, date is put for the last service, but if you would like to modify it, you can do it also uh, from this list, just modifying it. For example, if the last service made um, based on this interval was performed a week ago, we can change it here. So we can suppose that the mileage was, uh, was less. So we can also modify it here. So let it be like this, 28, like this, and the engine hours were also less. So let it do like this, and we can save it. And for the rest of the units, um, the information will be taken from the current state. So let's save it. Let's go to the intervals list, and uh, here it is, interval one created uh, based on the mileage, based on the engine hours, and based on the days. Uh, well, mm, the intervals um, can be used for creating the services.
So let's continue with the services. So a service is the maintenance work of the vehicle. Uh, so the services can be created manually or they can be created automatically based on the service intervals. Uh, let's see how a service can be created and let's see what kind of services, what types of services we have. So if you have a look at the list, uh, you will see that we have upcoming services. Mm. Uh, these services include uh, the overdue and the due services. So you can see all of them by using the filtration list um, or you can switch to the to the overdue services or you can switch to the due services okay um, so these are the upcoming services uh, we can switch to the services in progress so these are the services that are already um, active and the units that have these services are considered to be the units in, in service. Uh, we do not have any additional filtration for this list. Uh, and the last one um, are the archived services. Let's go to this part. Uh, the archived services include uh, the closed services and the rejected services. So here you can um, filter the list uh, according to the status. So you can see all the archived services or you can see only the closed ones or you can see only the rejected ones. Okay, so um, please pay your attention that the upcoming services um, and the services in progress uh, can be rejected if we don't need them. Uh, so uh, this can be done using the uh, change date or status of the service from the list. So we do like this and we can change the status to in progress, closed or rejected. Mm, the same can be done with the services in progress. So you can use the mm, quick status change. So the services in progress can be closed or rejected. Uh, but please pay your attention that the services that are already closed or rejected, that are archived services, cannot be, cannot be rejected. So these services are already registered and we cannot modify nor delete them. Uh, okay, uh, so let's create a service and we will see two, two ways for creating a service. So the first one will be based on an interval previously created. Uh, so uh, let it be a service in progress. Uh, let's start it today uh, uh, and let's select a unit. So let it be for a shuttle bus. And when you select a unit uh, in the line that stands for the intervals, you receive a drop-down list with the names of all the intervals created for this unit. So you can select one of the intervals from here. So let it be 30 days, 30 day inspection. So, and after you select this interval, uh, the service name automatically is the same as the interval name. Uh, the detailed description is the same taken from the interval and the mileage, the engine hours are taken from the current unit state. Moreover, you can attach a file with some information you will need with some documents. So let it be this one, for example. Um, and after that, you can switch to the line items tab and here you can uh, put the total cost for the service if it is to be put um, manually. Mm. Or you can add the line items from the library. Uh, so when adding a line item from the library, so let's put, so what was it? it was a 30 day service. So let it be a filter 
and let some let's add some labor for changing the filter uh, filter change okay mm, so let's save this service and uh, let's see what happens with this unit and let's see how many services in progress we will have uh, on the dashboard so let's create a service let's go to the dashboard and we see that we have three services in progress uh, the one that we have just created is 30 day inspection uh, and let's see that we have uh, three units in service right now. Uh, one of them is shuttle bus for which we have just created the service. So we have created a service based on an interval. Let's see um, another type of services that can be created without using any intervals previously created. So let's create a service and let's let's assume that something happened to a vehicle so we don't have any special interval for such a maintenance work so we can just um, create it okay uh, so we give it a name um, let it be. Uh, we select a unit um, let it be another bus we have here so, and uh, please pay your attention that we don't need uh, to select an interval if we want to register a separate service without the interval. So we leave this field blank as it is. Uh, and we can also attach some files if needed. And we can add the cost. And we can save the service. The information about the service. Now, if we go to the services list, uh, if we go to the archived services, uh, let's switch from projected to the closed ones. Um, I believe it will be somewhere over here. Okay. So uh, this is the list of all the services, no matter if they were created manually without any interval or if they were created uh, based on some interval previously made for these units. Uh, okay, so uh, as far as you see, you can create the services in some separate windows uh, indicating all the information or you can just change the service status um here from the service list using this button for uh, changing the date or status of the service okay uh, so i think we can go to the units um, if we go to the units tab we will see the list of all the units uh, in this fleet uh, you will see the information about the unit type, about the mileage, about the engine hours, uh, if there are some services right now for these units. Uh, or we can switch to the active units, the units that are not in the service right now. Or uh, on the contrary, we can switch to the units in the service. Uh, well let's open some particular units properties and see what information we have inside so we have some um, advanced information let's select another one let's select this one okay this one is better um, we see the unit current mileage we see the unit current engine hours we see the total cost of all the maintenance works performed for this unit since the fleet activation and we see the cost per one uh, kilometer for this unit we also see the same graphs we see on the dashboard and we see the total cost and we see the um, uh, unit mileage or the unit engine hours and we can select uh, another time interval if we want to see uh, some more precise information we also see the unit position on the map 
and we can go to the next tab that is the services and we will see the list of all the services created for this unit so these are the up up uh, the upcoming services so we can see the services details here or we can change the services state from the same window uh, we can see the so the services in progress for this unit so we can also change the services st uh, state from here and we can see the archive services as far as you remember the status of these services can already cannot be changed uh, well um, let's go to the assigned intervals and here we see all the intervals uh, that this unit is assigned to and uh, that all the intervals that are assigned to this unit. So you, you can see that you can assign both uh, the intervals to the unit and the units to the intervals. So a concept bit different from what we have in VLON today. Uh, okay, so we can remove some intervals from this list if we don't need them. And we can add some, uh, some intervals to the assigned ones if we need for this unit. Okay. Mm, and the last information, the last tab in the unit information is the unit profile. Uh, well, this tab is currently under active development. So, and we plan to include some more vehicle types to the list. So, as for now, you can select uh, one of the following types we have available here, or you can use other if there is no type for the vehicle you have. And we can add some additional description if needed. Okay, that's all with the unit additional information. Let's go to the units list. Uh, we see that we can also filter the list according to the vehicle type. So let it be, for example, almost all the vehicles here are buses. So let's select a bus. And here we are, we've got the list of all the buses. Uh, well, um, uh, the list of the units, the list of the intervals and the list of the services can be exported so you can use this information if you need uh, to give uh, it to your, to your worker or to anyone else. Uh, and let's go to the reports to see how all these preparations uh, can be shown uh, in the analytical reports. So we have uh, three reports type uh, types available for fleet run. They are fleet archived services, they are unit archived services, and they are archived services by interval. As far as you see, all of them are about archived information. Uh, so um, let's see some example. Let's see all the fleet archived services. In this case, you cannot select any element here because this uh, report will be um, will be executed for all the fleet. So you can. Uh, select some time interval, let it be since the 1st of November. And let's execute the report. Okay, um, we see all the services performed for all the units from the fleet. And uh, the columns you see here include a lot of valuable information that can be used for your analytical purposes. Uh, for example, you can see the time in service to understand how much time the units were out of all the active state and how much time was um, uh, was the unit uh, in the service. Uh, if you don't need some columns in this report, you can deactivate them right here. So you can just deactivate them and only leave the ones that you need. Uh, so these reports are, all, are also exportable, so you can export them. Um, let's see some other example of a report. So let it be for, a, for the unit services. So if we select a report for the unit services, of course, we will be able to select the element or the name of the unit we would like to execute this report for. So let it be the shuttle bars. Uh, 
and the same. So we received the information of all the services performed for this unit and we can add some columns if we want to see some additional information um, and we can export the report. So generally, um, that's all uh, regarding the reports. Uh, but I wanted to mention that the historic um, historical period for the reports now is planned to be five up to up to five years. So we are not planning to limit it, but if we do, we'll, we will notify you additionally. Uh, so um, we see the um, analytical information in form, in form of the reports, but we can also receive some information about the, the services, uh, status changes in the, in the notifications. So we have this uh, red bell here so we can click on this bell and we will receive a list of all the services status changes uh, for the previous 14 days so they are stored here for 14 days uh, and you can see the name of the service you can see if it is a due service overdue if it is closed or if it is rejected so you see all this information and you can even go to the service if you want to register it or if you want to change uh, the status for this service so let's do it let's do it close let's make it closed so let's try to check for shuttle bars A. Let's attach some file and let's add some um, cost information. Let it be like this and let's save it. So we have just saved a service for, for this unit. Uh, what else do we have in the interface? If we click on the username, we will also be able to go to the documentation. Um, you see that it's quite new designed well, and you will find uh, all the detail, the detailed explanations about uh, every feature Fleetrun has. So, and also if the user we are logged into the system uh, has access to other fleets, we can go to the administration. So this option is available for the users that have uh, access to the activated fleets and that have some subordinated accounts. So if we go to the administration, we see that we have two fleets. Uh, these fleets are, are activated for two accounts that are under under the account of our user okay so uh, i believe it is all for today uh, um, did you send us any questions uh, we will uh, need some two minutes to re to see the questions you sent and to prepare the answers for you meanwhile you can send more questions if you have uh, so we will come back in a minute <laughs>